Hey everyone, I want to walk you through this now because it matters. So when you buy a domain name, okay, unless you need to do it for your main business, if you're just creating a website like an investor or if you're creating a website to act like a backlinking website or a referral website for your main website, okay, then do not go to GoDaddy and buy a new domain. We're never going to do that again. The idea of getting 10, 20, 50, 100 domains uh, we're never going to do it by looking for new domain names to buy from GoDaddy. Here's why. Competition is such that by now, GoDaddy will pretty much hold a new domain in the sandbox for a year before it gets to start really earning. It'll get a trickle of traffic, but you can push a lot of proper effort into that website and it won't really rise. It's the thing, right? Uh, for like a year. It used to be about three months. Now it's about a year. Now, what you're gonna do instead is go use a service like spamzilla.io. I mean, there are a number of services. They offer sort of a different way of seeing the same information. It's good to sign up to more than one until you find what you like. And besides, they go through their own methodology to score the websites, like a Spamzilla score, Spamzilla's interpretation, okay? The thing is, all the different services do their own. Uh, and so while this is trying to work through a big list of domains, there are many domains that hasn't gotten to, while other services may have gotten to them. So you might not see what you're looking for here, but if you log into some of the other services, you can find what you're looking for. Just depends, literally on the day and when you just happen to log in. Okay, having said that, I watched a guy whose job was to buy domains that passed scrutiny, uh, expired domains, auction domains, and go ahead and point them at the client websites that they had, you know, they had clients, and use the backlinking domains to backlink those clients. And by doing that, they'd force the clients to rise on their keywords. Okay. Now, good domain names usually go for something. They don't just expire. They're going to be like 60 bucks, 40 bucks. And these are for really low ball scores. About the time you get to really higher level scores, like 450, 600 bucks for a domain name, it's because the people were web savvy. And so you're paying them like 450 bucks or 600 bucks or whatever it is they're charging to have done what? Bought the domain years ago, sat on it for years, was active with it, kept it active. It didn't just sit there with nothing. It had websites running on it, one or more. Uh, usually the same website over most of those years. Usually in one industry or another, a particular industry, okay? And um, they did things right. If you get too many backlinks, you can force a spam report. That's not too many, but notice it's larger than any other number here. So this is backlinks, and um, then you have backlinks specifically to the root, okay? So it's a uh, uh, root domain, sorry. So this is like the number of domains was 19, and a total of 1,042 links came off of it, pointing at this website over here. That's not too bad. And that, you know, 1,000 divided by 19 is like 50 page websites. And if there was a link in the footer or in a popular page or a popular link uh, on every site, just had this mention on the side or gave credit to these guys on every page, then that's how that happens. And that's not so strange. There are a few things you want to look for absolutely when you're trying to buy. And there's filters and stuff. And the filters are really cool. Whoa, I kind of really opened that up, didn't I? There are a lot of things about these filters. <laughs> uh, so let me try to <laughs> uh, find a middle ground. Okay, major TLDs, top level domains. What do you want? .com, .net, .biz, not, .info, .org. Not a bad choice. It's pretty cool. You could say .com only. It might limit you. Something to keep in mind. Country TLDs, you're going to deselect all, right? You don't want any country DLD, uh, TLDs unless there's a reason. If you're putting your websites on our servers in the U.S., you don't want to see any of these. They're just wasting your time. Um, there's some different tools like Majestic Backlinks, right? And so you can figure out what it is that you want to go for. You know, you can aim for a thing at a time or all categories at once. If you do go for a certain thing, you know, news or whatever, you could go for a subcategory. So you can get really specific on something, you know, shopping, say, and it could be pets, you know, pets. All right, so just so you know, 
you can do these searches left and right. You can save your filters, right? And then that way you can um, see what comes up every day through the filter. Okay, biggest thing about citation flow and trust flow is that they should be relatively even. That's why there's a ratio. If you see one of these numbers, the, the range you go for is like one to five, or like, let's say, I don't know, let's say 10 to 100, and this is 10 to 100. Okay, the range that you should see on the keywords that pop up, uh, the ratio should be similar. It should be like, you know, 80% would be the ratio, like 70% to, uh, you know, I know, 65% to 85%, something like that. 75 to 85. Again, you'll, you'll kind of limit yourself when you do this, but <clears throat> it's important to get a good ratio, okay? Uh, links is like backlinks, domains, and stuff. You don't need to fill in most of these things. You can just look at the, the main chart and see what you think. Ahrefs. I attached a free Ahrefs account. It was not attached. I was offered to attach it, so I created it and attached it. I have since updated or upgraded Ahrefs because I, for one, think it's a really good idea. Language, anchor language, site language. You know what anchor language is? But on the backlinks on other people's websites, when you can click the wording and it takes you to your website, well, what language is that in? We kind of want it just to be in English, don't we? Uh, for our purposes, because we're in the US on Amazon filters, but you could make any argument. You could do Spanish, could do French, you know, for Canada, it's not far away, and Spanish. So you could say you're open to those things, but really that's up to you if you are open to those things. Okay. Um, Spamzilla, you can go with the scores and say, give me the absolute best. And every day they're going to tell you, can't find anything. Most of the time, you're never going to find the magic domains that you really want. The holy grail of great domains that you can buy. What you're going to find are iffy, but eh, leaning good or leaning a little down. So you look at the price. Um, it, the more you're willing to pay for auction domains, uh, then the better off you can start and the faster you can grow. Okay, so yeah, like that ratio is kind of off. I don't like it at all. One of these is like 100% more than the other. That's too much for me. Uh, this is okay. That's okay. This is what, uh, yeah, domain rating by Ahrefs. It'd be nice if this was in the double digits, even 11. Heck, even nine. I'd love it to be higher. But there you go. I mean, four beats nothing. Getting out of the sandbox basically means double digits. This is at least en route. So I may have some work to still do on it to kick it over the top. But I'm ahead of where I would be if I bought a brand new domain name here and start with a domain rating of zero. And it will probably stay there for like a long time, maybe half a year. Okay. So yeah, you can kind of ignore this because this is based on whether there's a URL. Uh, don't worry about it. Um, root, uh, yeah, referring domains and backlinks is like how many domains mention this website and the backlinks, right? You know the thing I don't really like about it? 56 referring domains and they only have a domain rating of four. Why isn't this number closer to the number of referring domains? Why isn't this number like at least a 45 if it's got 56 domains pointing at it? no matter how many backlinks come off of those domains. Okay, does that make sense? So it could be better for sure. Um, let me see, another thing I wanna point out, like spam score is kinda good, you can hit the down arrow, you can get some info. One thing you care about, if the active history and the domain age, you care about them being similar, this means 20 years. It means a website's 20 years old. This means, Every time archive.org checked once a year or more, it saw that this website was active. There was a website on the domain, like that website right there, you know, this thing right here, okay? Usually it wasn't like this, right? Usually it was a domain, uh, just a thing to keep in mind. Over the years, this is kind of like showing you snapshots over the years but it's always been active. And did it change like to a totally different industry? Oh, it's expired, it's expired. So it's just parked, but not for long. And what's that mean? That means that if we go rebuilding this old website from archive.org, right? We don't need to use our template. We just need to put 
you know, paste the contents back into the new website we create so that we can start with where we left off and then begin modifying from there after uh, Google catches on that the website's live again, okay? Besides, you wanna recreate a bunch of the pages that used to be there for the um, backlinks that used to exist so that they can reconnect to the website and that way the, connect, uh, the website's domain rating can start to shoot back up. This thing can start to climb again. Uh, okay, <clears throat> four park pages, language is German, English. Topic is recreation and travel. It would be bad if it just jumped topics every couple of years, right? If this thing was just getting like tossed over or sold over to a new guy every couple of years and it was always a new industry, that would suck. It kind of means it's always starting over again. Redirects is 13. I believe redirects is like um, how many times someone new took this on, uh, this website on, but I forget. I, I don't really care about that so much. I care that the active history and the domain age are similar. And I care that they've been live through to not terribly long ago. Again, I don't like it so much. That's seven years ago, right? And then it pretty much went to this empty state. Okay? Every time archive.org checked it out. So I don't like that. Um, I do like this. Spam message is clean. Okay? That's very important. Spam message means did somebody put too many backlinks onto the website like 813 out of 56 is perfectly fine but what if this was 56 and that was like 24,000 that's spamming right even if that's like 300 and this is like 60,000 it could be spamming now there are some websites that actually deserve their backlinks but Google can tell matter of fact where can I find one really, really fast? I was just looking at one. Incel derm, in derm cell, incel derm. Uh, I'm trying to remember what I was looking at. Uh, it might've been this, let me see. And I just wanna show you how this looked. Okay, Ahrefs, backlink checker. I wanna show you what bad backlinking looks like real fast. For those of you that have never seen this before, Take a look. They have a domain rating of zero, even though seven websites are backlinking them. Huh, must be crap backlinks. And the answer is yeah. Matter of fact, if you scroll down, the bottom three are three different websites. You can tell developmentmichigan.com or something, developmentmi.com, starcounts.com, webranksite.com, but they all have an article. How to write an article in under 20 minutes. How to write an article in under 20, how to write an article in under... I'll bet you that these websites are basically the same. Now, you might think, well, heck, man, that's great domain rating. 54, 57, 58, 68. That must be good. Well, then how come this happens? I'll tell you what the problem is. You want to see? You can see it. Let's, uh, let's actually go. Okay, there's the page, right? And how to write an article in under 20 minutes. Blah, 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 blah. That wasn't even a long article, was it? That was an article written in under 20 minutes, I can tell you. Now, here's where it gets crazy. See that? That's a link to a website. That's another link to another website. Another link to another website. They're kind of like branding themselves on the name. If I click this, okay, that's even a dead link. That looks like crap to Google. Google notices tons of dead links. Better be careful clicking these. I never know what I'm gonna see. Uh, but here, look at this. See this? Oh my God, somebody only wrote that article in under 20 minutes to have an excuse for a living web page so that they could therefore go and create backlinks to all these sites. All these sites are like their clients, right? Let's see, incel, derm, yep. <laughs> There they are, you know, kind of near the top of the list. They probably put the new ones in at the top so they don't have to scroll down all the time. They just shove it down, put another one on top, right? <laughs> What's the problem then? Even though it's got a lot of juice on that, on that particular domain name, that juice gets divided by all of these guys. It's like a, I don't know, 5,000 links are dividing the juice. So there's no juice to any one single site. And th that explains how these guys have like no domain rating, right? That's why it's a zero. Okay, 
So bad backlinks do nothing for you. I'm looking for the referring domains to approximate the domain rating number. It can be off by half. I don't care. But this is way too big a ratio to be off, right? That means that these basically are not doing this website any good. So it's just not gotten very far yet. It may or may not be out of the sandbox. I can try to find other ways to tell. You know what another way to tell is? Look at something like SpyFu. So you can check out the history. Ooh, well, they were up there, okay? If I look at ranking history, okay? Okay, they had some backlinks. Not many, maybe, I don't know. I'd have to log in to see better, right? Uh, they didn't show up for much over the last year. What about the last two? Okay, they didn't show up for much of anything over the last two. Ah, <laughs> uh, so there you go. All right, so anyway, it, it looks to me like there's potential here in this in this domain. There's not a lot of, of value. I would not buy it for much. Uh, I'm going to have to mainly do the work myself, but it could very well be out of the sandbox because it's so old and because it's showing signs of having had a history of at least doing things. And yeah, there are websites pointing at it and stuff. I think it's out of the sandbox. Does that make sense? And this isn't too bad. If we get out there and just start doing what we do, um, then th we can let this take care of itself. It doesn't matter to us so much. Okay. So these are really the things that we're caring about. What else was there? I just want to remember now. Well, obviously the price, right? 60 bucks or who knows? Okay, let's pull this up. <coughs> Yeah, I mean, some of these things I, I don't even really look at because it doesn't really matter to me. Um, <clears throat> date added. It expires on this date, to letting you know that it's probably bit, um, either on auction or just it'll expire. And that's all there is to it, right? So you can go look at the source to find out where to buy. See, 15 bucks, it's up on name cheap auction. So you can go there and search for the domain name and you can look to buy it if you want. These sources, pending delete, these are just not auctions. These domains are just simply going to be deleted. Nobody put them up for auction, but you can tell when they're gonna expire. Does that make sense? And yeah, you can sort by these things, all right? So you can just see what the heck is in the system. You know, you can sort low, sort high. Anything with no scores, forget all about it. You want to buy a website for $50,000? It's probably got some pretty good scores. Great. Unless it doesn't. Sometimes people just figure their domain name alone is worth it. I mean, look at this. No domain rating? I mean, would I even consider this for 50 k huh. See what's going on here. Whoops. Okay, let's just see. I'm dying to know. Ha, nothing of great significance. So unless the ranking history or something blows me away. Mm, I don't know about blows me away. Again, I should log in to get a better answer, right? Because right now, I'm just thinking the nerve of these guys, right? 19 keywords, and their competitors are smaller. Wow. Yeah, all I can think is the nerve of these guys, really, you know? Rank changes are not impressive. It never ranked for hardly anything or got hardly any clicks, at least over the last year. What in the world are they doing trying to sell this thing <coughs> for 50000 are they only doing it based on the name of the website and the idea that it must be out of the sandbox by now? Really? Is that it? Okay. There are, of course, a bunch of other tools. You could go look at different things. Most of you guys know what archive.org is, right? It's what you call the Wayback Machine. And that's right here, the Wayback Machine. And if you put in a basic URL, It'll show you some things that really matter. And the first thing you'll notice is how long the website's been active. Wow, this website's been active off and on. See, 
There was enough activity to get archive.org to check back on it, but it was kind of dying off. They have more activity here than here and then none. And then maybe the same people, maybe other people who bought the domain picked it up and got it going again. So somewhere in here, somebody got it going again. It kind of hung out for a while and then it died for a long time. Okay. Then kind of up and died and then kind of up and you know what I think? I think everyone keeps buying it based on the name, but that they can't really make a go of it hardly, you know? Now, if you scroll down, you see blue dots like this, okay? And some are bigger. I think it's, yeah, more snapshots, like two versus one. But if you look at the snapshot, it'll just tell you, it can tell you which page it's snapshotted and what it looked like at the time. And yeah, that's true all the way back in time. <laughs> All the snapshots it took, it was holding on to them. So you know what you can tell? Well, I see a phone number. It ends in 7101. So if I want to know whether these guys are the same guys from like back in here. Ooh, doesn't look like it. No, let's, uh, let's try here. What can we see in here, you know? Uh, 7101. Okay, these guys own the same site back then, it looks like. So, like, for the past 12 years or so. 11 years, 12 years, whatever. So, it just gives me some sense that these guys really did stick with this thing for a while. Okay, they may have just closed up shop and stuff. But I'm still not at all convinced why it should be worth the kind of money it's worth. I don't know what they're doing other than trying to retire and just, you know pulling a Hail Mary to see if they can get it sold for that much, all right? But if you come down to some, you know, like, and again, you can do filtering, right? And with your filters, uh, you can get further into this thing and actually make some sense out of it. You can filter for pricing. What are you willing to spend on domain names if they have good scores? Well, think about it again the right way. Most people who let their domains expire are because they're not web savvy and the domain doesn't have much value, right? But for the guys who are charging something, they're more web savvy usually and they usually have some stats to back it up, okay? Sometimes guys at the top, that's just a plain Hail Mary. Uh, but if I were to dig in here, I don't know, if I were to go to page eight and just see what the numbers look like there, of course, it's still gonna be pretty big, but like, 1425 why are there so many for 1425 <coughs> whoops sorry uh i don't know if it's the same buyer or what but take a look at this see that x uh that says insufficient archive dot or history available i don't know if i spent 1425 on a newer website especially if it's only got a domain rating of two and not even enough backlinks to really count necessarily uh, root domains. Yeah, look at that. How ridiculous that is. We had a two, right? Where's our two? Okay, was it that one or some other one? <laughs> oh, that one. And it's got 45 domains. This should be closer to a 45. Like a 35 to 55. Something like that. But it's a two. What good is that? Why is this guy selling it for so much? It's not even got really good scores. The higher the number, the better the score, usually. I think <laughs> um, still that's that's not a good enough ratio 56 to 8 no anyway when you do the filters it saves you a lot of time you can create them and name them and save them and then switch to them you can load a filter uh, da, 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 da. you can put domains on a watch list right uh, select a filter, baseline right, home gardening stack, you know. You can look inside your certain industries for the things you want. And I look for, you know, the serious stuff, the stuff with the really high scores. And if I can't find them, then I just go kind of browsing domain table under tools. And I start looking to see what's there, right? Now, again, there are more than Spamzilla. So you might sign up to more just to, to you know, because everyone's got their own processing stuff. Um, anyway, there are 50,000 domains expiring every single day to 100,000 domains expiring every single day. It goes to show how impulsively we pick up domains and then eventually they expire, right? Don't get domains from out of the country 
and put them on a US server. Don't get a .au and put it on a .us server. Don't do that. Get a .org, get a .net, get a .com, all right? Um, so unless you're actually gonna be in Australia and you're hosting on an Amazon Australia server and you can ask us to get you a server there, if you're paying for it, then we can set one up there for you. That way you're local in Australia and you can have these totally awesome websites we made working for you in your area. And then sure, you wanna pick up an Australia domain that, that has good scores, right? This is good. Uh, seven domain ranking with 11 uh, domains backlinking it. That's a good ratio, 31, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Real domains is 31 with backlinks of 78. And that's still, I mean, that's not great. There really isn't. It's like 25% of the value or blah, I don't know, 30 something percent of the value, but it's not terrible. It's also kind of young and early yet, but still. Look at this, uh, trust flow and citation flow, they're off by double, but they're low numbers, so I'm not too worried. Um, but yeah, majestic backlinks from root domains, that's just another root domain and backlink measurement, that's all. Uh, whatever, I could dig further and see what I think and check the price. But yeah, if I was in Australia, I might wanna grab a couple of these different guys, you know, and check them, put them on a watch list or whatever, you know, and then get them. Okay, final word to the wise. You do not buy domains through here. This is just informational. You buy domains through uh, wherever it is that you can buy the domain. You click on this, right? And it'll take you to wherever it is you need to go. Or you go here. Like if I go there for name cheap auctions, it's going to show me that domain right now and the price, the number of bids, and the amount of time that's left, and I could bid now if I want, and they may have a pay now, yeah, like buy now link, I could find out what they are selling it for, and it's not, yeah, forget it. <laughs> it's showing me all the buy nows, not just the one auction anymore. Now, when you buy any one of these, they're on Namecheap. So if you're on GoDaddy, you're gonna have to transfer it. But that's not too hard, because you gotta sign up for in, uh, uh, after Nick which can do the transfer for you uh, when you do these. So you just kind of go through the process. Like if you actually try to add something to a car and buy it when you're ready, the first time you do this, then the system will guide you through what you have to do uh, to get all set up, okay? But never buy just because the price and because the name looks a certain way. You know, always buy because you look at statistics and make sure that it makes sense before you do. And by the way, <laughs> even after you buy it and you own it, it might take a couple of weeks for them to transfer it to you in a way you can use it, okay? And you'll get notified, like on GoDaddy, it'll say, congratulations, your domain is now available in your account for you to use anytime you want. All right, last thing I wanna point out, um, majestic language, side languages, whatever it is, you want English, or unless you don't, you know, unless you want something else, just be aware, all right? So, because if the website is mainly in another language and you start typing in English, that means a whole different market. And so Google's gotta reassess you from the ground up. Worst thing you can do is buy a domain for 50 grand that has really good scores and it's got a lot of traffic, and then think, okay, it's in uh, French, so I'm gonna rip all the pages out after I translate to English. No, <laughs> translate all the French pages to English and replace them and you are gonna drop in rank and basically start all over again because you're doing something totally different. What do you normally do when you buy one of these things? You rebuild where it left off and then that way you can, and then you can move forward from there. I'll, I'll tell you what, I, I'll show you, I'll show you. When we got the skinniest.com, okay, we grabbed our own template Okay, it's our template, which is great because we needed that, right? The template doesn't matter. Google does not care if you switch templates, all right? So then we went in and created all those, recreated all those pages by going to archive.org and rebuilding pages out of archive.org. We built 212 pages out of archive.org. Do you have to do them all? No, 
But the more you do, the more you're automatically recreating the best that the domain had to offer. So this is easy hand me stuff. Now, one of the biggest reasons we recreated was so we could make sure to recreate the URLs that were getting backlinked. Because the backlinks that came into this site, some were like, oh, wow, that's interesting. I'm going to backlink to this page of their website. Well, when we first bought the domain name, there was no page, right? There was no website. We had to create a website. So we went to archive.org, looked up all the stuff that we could on Skinius and started recreating those pages. And especially for the Ahrefs backlink checker, right? All right. What we also found, see, that's 104 websites, okay, with 603 in the way of backlinks. Not enough domain rating, but it's enough domain rating for me to be satisfied. Maybe 80 of these suck, right? But then there's like 24 that don't, or 20 that don't, or 15 that don't, right? And that matters. In the meantime, yeah, you know, they linked to here. They linked to here. They link to here. These are different URLs. Now, you know what we realized? We don't have folders and folders. So we created HT access coding on the website. <laughs> I'm kind of having fun going through all this. I forget where, the, where, the, where it is. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm just dragging you along because I keep thinking one more thing, one more thing, you know that you really should understand <laughs> before you go buy it. Okay, it's not on that server. Let me uh, let me switch to this server. Okay. Sorry. All right, we're gonna get there. I hope you're finding this useful because it really is. Saves you a year <laughs> to do it right. Okay, if I go into Skinius, some of you guys are really familiar with this stuff, right? Others of you pay us to do it. All right, public HTML, or you pay us anyway because we've got tools you don't have, right? There's the HT access file. If I edit it, we have all these rewrite rules. And if I zoom this out, you know what the rewrite rules are saying? Change all of these um, inner folder levels to just the basic page at the root. Change this to the page of the root. Change that to the page of the root. So all those folders that used to be getting backlinked to, right, from the backlinks, all of these layered folder levels for the backlinks, like slash landscape slash uh, or slash lighting slash. We dealt with all that in, the, in here, right, slash lighting slash whatever it is, slash garden holes slash slash garden tools slash we changed them all that way if you go to one of those old links that had landscape in it for instance see skinnyscom slash landscape slash what is the best metal landscape edging if we click oh that's one that's broken oh i gotta i gotta change the ending oh that's why that acted like the um index page for that okay i'll go back and fix that but now, see what it did? Skinius.com slash and right to the page. That's perfectly okay as long as we do this as 301 redirects, meaning permanently move the page to this other place because I'm on a new template now, for example. So that's okay. That way, those backlinks that go to the wrong folders, who cares? We just rewrote the rules to have it go to the right place and find the right page. At least most of the time, I got that one page off, but I can fix that. Anyway, we reconnected so much stuff that if I go looking in Ahrefs right now, yeah, here. So all the old links point to the new links. They're all 301 redirects and status 200 means it's live. And so we reconnected so many of the backlinks. Not every single one of them, Many of them, though. And the point is that by recreating all that stuff, we're taking advantage of the original strength of the website so that now, if you're wondering, 
we can take the pages out of the menu that used to be there. We can just make sure that they stay on the website in the sitemap, right? They're here. Great, they're here, okay? But huh, it's our website, dang it. So we want to replace the contents on the front page to some degree or make it about us or shovel this stuff down right above it. And we would want to put in some links to our stuff, you know, assuming that we sell things, bonsai trees or who knows what. Those can be affiliate links for our things. So now all the pages on the website that already existed and all the pages that we add to this website, wherever people come in through, they're at it, they can read it. But well, one thing they're gonna see, our top menu with the options. We could have a call to action bar float up and down just to say, hey, browse our uh, landscaping selection here for your own yard kind of thing. We could have a welcome pop-up glide in and suggest, hey, if you're looking for great landscaping stuff, click here. We could even have a YouTube video when our affiliate link, right? So all this stuff, our pages pitching things with our affiliate links to some landscaping company, right? So if you're thinking about it, this is the way you recreate and build up stuff. And then finally, the main pages of our site should not have Google AdSense on them. Anything here, anything in the menu, we need people to concentrate on our message. Okay, we'll get images in here and stuff and get a link to start and stuff. But all the other pages in the sitemap that are not on the, on the, in the menu, boom, we want Google AdSense ads all over the place and a couple of spots in between the paragraphs so that Google wants to rank this page really, really high for the appropriate keywords. <laughs> and we'll do that whole table of contents thing so that there's an easy way to get down to any one of these H2 tags without scrolling to see what they are, right? And then that way, Google really wants to rank this. And then we'll pull in some YouTube video that has to do just general how-to or cool tips and tricks or green thumbers kind of video about landscaping to, to give it some strength. We could put different videos on the page. Videos, images, graphs, uh, links to PDFs to download that teach us stuff, uh, anything we want. And then we got our affiliate links up here and maybe the PDFs have affiliate links in them. Uh, for people to read the PDF and then click the link to go somewhere to buy something and we earn so much stuff to do, right? So, okay, I think you're starting to get the point. <clears throat> as long as you recreate the contents, then it doesn't matter what template you put it on. So you could start with any template from website installer, like so, right? Any of these. And then start building it on there. And then change the colors, and then change the fonts to something cooler for landscaping. Maybe even go with the color you like already. You don't have to think about it. But do you know how we chose our template? We looked at the original template in archive.org. Okay? Just to show you what that looks like, okay? Notice that this website's been around since 2015 and it's been active most of the time. All right, so we're going to go look at something pretty current. Okay. We were just curious what the front page looked like. It's like, aha. Now, it takes a long time to res in sometimes on archive.org because, you know, it's easy for it to be slow. And sometimes we have to switch to a new page, see if we can see something a little better because it's not enough. This is not what the page looked like. <laughs> Look more like a page, you know? There was more going on there. So yeah, come on, show me the rest of the page. Oh, it's gonna have trouble now. I don't know, maybe because I'm on uh, my recording with you guys. Anyway, I think you get the idea. We just looked at the original template, saw what they were doing and said, okay, based on what we see them doing, let's use this template from our list of templates, you know? And so once we did that, we said, hey, we're good to go. We know what we want, you know? We got it, we can make this work. And then we just started recreating so that we could rebuild it and then pick it up from there and make it better, right? Okay, hope this makes sense. This is a way to get in, get going, choose your domain name, choose your template, get all set up. And then, uh, yeah, be able to start, okay? 
That way you can understand what the tools are and the needs are to kind of get back up and going again, right? And of course, we can do this for you professionally, or you can do it for yourself if you know what you're doing. All right. Talk to you after a while.